Hello and welcome to the Empower Couples Podcast, where here you get modern, non-boring relationship advice for you and your partner to communicate like pros, fight smarter, and stay on the same team no matter the challenge that you face. I am one of your hosts, Aaron Freeman. And I'm Jocelyn Freeman, but you all just know us as the Freemans. And this episode is, does emotional or physical intimacy come first? A chicken or the egg dynamic in marriage? Intimacy is one of these needs in marriage that seem to conflict between men and women. Now, intimacy, before we go any further, is closeness, and closeness is both physical and emotional. And that's really where this whole dynamic is going to come from. And it isn't the case for all couples, but we would say there's a good percentage of men that say they need this physical intimacy to feel close to their partners, which is a physical-based need, where women tend to say they are missing an emotional connection and then find it challenging to be physically intimate when that's not there. So this is the main difference. It's the physical and the emotional need, and how do we prioritize this for our partners? Does one have to come before the other? Exactly, and so in the episode, we're going to cover some nuances to this, as well as some tips for you to prioritize both of them. Now to address the chicken or the egg dynamic that's in the title, there are so many instances in our work with couples and on sessions, I said it an hour ago to one couple, where it does feel like which one comes first. You're saying you need this, I'm saying I need this, and it feels like I can't do mine till you do yours. And it can feel like you're stuck and that pertains to many different topics. Today, we're focusing specifically on emotional or physical intimacy. Or if you didn't say this, Mm -hmm. I'll do this, but after you do that. Exactly. And then you're stuck, right? If, If the other person isn't doing that, or if it's all reliant on one person, but remember that within a relationship, It's a cycle. It's a pattern. And you two are playing off of each other. So really, it is one of those situations where it isn't one necessarily before the other. That isn't how things really work a lot of times. It's not linear or exact that way. And so as you'll hear in our notes throughout this episode, it really is ideal if you two are coming to the table both wanting to change the cycles, both wanting to meet each other's needs, waking up in the day, not going, oh, if they do this, then I'll do this. No, it goes, what am I going to bring to the table today? How am I going to do my best to meet my partner's needs? Now, speaking of needs, think back to being in high school and hearing the term Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? When you heard in school and you're like, okay, base needs around, you know, having our food, our water, our shelter. That's a requirement for all human beings to feel those physiological needs. Then above that are safety needs. That's like I'm employed. I know I'm going to have an income. I have resources. My health is intact. Now above having those safety needs is love and belonging. This is intimacy. This is family. This is a sense of connection. And today's episode is at this level. But note, if you're trying to create intimacy, do you have the other needs before that even met, right? We hope that you have those basic needs, of course. Safety, though, is one that we can't step over really quick before we go further into this. Do you both feel a sense of security in the partnership? Not that one of you has your foot out the door One of you, the next time you argue, is going to, you know, threaten the relationship. If you don't have that security, that safety of commitment within the partnership, how do you go to that higher level of being able to even focus on love and belonging, right? So I just wanted to note that, that that's really important that you are creating that sense of commitment and security within the partnership. So we want to invite you into seeing this like any other expression of needs, not just this one about intimacy that's hard to navigate because which one comes first Mm -hmm. so if we put this into context you can listen to your partner and their need independently of whether you see it as valid or if it conflicts with yours you know then you can express your own need also being independent of theirs so that it doesn't conflict with or cancel out Mm -hmm. your partners Mm -hmm. And, and an easy example of this is, well, I need more time together, 
oh, well, I need more personal time to refill my own cup. Like I need to be alone and you need to be with me. Exactly. As we do both. <laughs> this is, I would say, a big one for new parents. I mm-hmm. think we've experienced that a little bit ourselves and certainly in the hundreds of sessions we've had that has definitely come up. So mm-hmm. yeah, this is similar. I don't want to have intimacy feel like it's this own thing out by itself that's mm-hmm. unlike anything else. Like, no, there's many times in which I express my need and because my partner is missing a need of theirs, they share theirs. Mm-hmm. And then I feel like I'm invalidated or canceled out. And then again, like, well, chicken or the egg. If you really can see each other's expression of what I need, whether it's physical intimacy and yours is emotional intimacy, they can be independent. You can hear them out, validate them, mm-hmm. and take the appropriate steps to start to meet their needs. I think the couple that we talked to an hour ago, he said something really powerful. And towards the end, because we were talking about specific dynamics in their communication and follow through. And we started to highlight towards the end that something that was becoming the forefront of their partnership was life management. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's a part of things, right? Like we have to follow through. We have to be, you know, equally putting in effort to manage the home and to provide for our family and to do all the to-dos. However, that's not going to keep you feeling close. And again, intimacy Mm. is about closeness. And intimacy is also about the quality of your partnership. We don't want you guys to just be together for decades and be like, let's tough it out. You know, like we can just survive this thing together, right? No, we want you to experience fulfillment. And we truly believe, and I'm sure you would as well, that intimacy is a big part of that. You want to feel close, not just that you have someone that manages life well with you. So that's the theme, that is the context for this. And we're going to go into tips for each of the sections, both to foster physical intimacy as well as emotional, but really the answer to the chicken or the egg scenario, which one comes first, is that they both are something you come to the table with. They are not things that cancel each other out, and there isn't really one that comes before the other. Because if you think that way, you'll be holding out or you'll be waiting for your partner to do something before you do. So it's okay. We might not be going straight up to like, all right, yeah, I'm going to meet your needs of having sex every day, right? It might not be jumping from zero to a hundred. However, you can make progress in each area. How do we provide a sense of emotional connection and physical connection, even if we are, if you're in a rebuilding stage, because we know a lot of you are there, by the way, we have a great uh, resource coming soon for rebuilding a partnership, but you might just be taking steps towards these. And that's, again, the mentality. You don't want to hold out on each other. You don't want to think that there's, you know, this step before has to come before this step. It's how do we make progress in each of them? Would you say it any differently than that? No, I was wanting to get right into the emotional pieces mm-hmm. first. So creating emotional intimacy is needed no matter which priority it has for the other person. Mm-hmm. Like if I were feeling that physical was more of a priority and you felt emotional was, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. Similar to what you just said. So let's dive into the specific ways to build emotional intimacy. Why don't you start? Because I know attunement is one that you talk about frequently. Yeah. So attunement, which I know is not a word you probably use in your everyday language. However, it's something that we notice is so important, especially for women. Is it important to men? Yes. But I notice that for women, when this is missing, they do feel more guarded or more withdrawn or less inclined to be physically intimate. So you can think of attunement just like, you know, it's usually referred to some kind of of an instrument, but it's that I am attentive to your mood, your energy, where you might be at mentally and emotionally, and I am meeting you there, right? So an example in real time would be if I notice that Aaron seems stressed, he's being a little bit more short with me, a little more withdrawn in his head, my being attuned to him would be to go, paying attention to that, realizing that, and more so focusing on what might he need right then. Instead of the opposite of being attuned would be, I'm reacting to it. I'm making him feel bad for it. Why are you being so short? What are you so stressed about? Or playing into it and then it really builds into momentum. Now, of course, I would hope 
for the same from him. You know, some real examples, even in the last month or so, when I have certain things going on with other relationships in my life, I can sometimes feel more, not on edge, but like vulnerable, you know, more like I need some encouragement and some connection. Now, I might not outwardly know that's what I need or say that to him, but if he notices I'm being more uh, maybe reactive, like even just subtly, I feel he's attuned to me when he checks in. And he goes, hey, how you doing? Or he even asked the specific question, how's it going with that person? That's him being attuned. And that is something women want so badly is for their partner to be attuned to the mood, to the energy, to the capacity that the person has. That is a really foundational piece to feeling emotional closeness. It's related to the podcast we did on Read the Room. Mm-hmm. And we had a client actually bring that up to us as a reminder. Yes. And in a practical example, like you were talking about, if you've been dealing with a personal situation Mm -hmm. and it's not resolving itself as promptly and you have some emotion about it, I would like to think I'm attuned enough to notice that and not bring up a comment that I want to make about Mm -hmm. how we've been operating on our business or one or two things that like didn't get picked up you mm-hmm. know, from sky's floor or something like something you would normally do that small. Right. It's like, all right, like, let me think about the level of priority mm-hmm. or just being attuned. Mm-hmm. Like, are you in the space for, do you have the capacity for, is this even meaningful for me to bring up? Or am I just sharing my own preferences and complaints and not taking into account? Not reading the room. Yeah. Reading the room. Mm-hmm. You know, I said to the male partner that, you know, they brought this up. It's also like being a safety in American football. Yeah. You are not as active in the play, but you observe everything that's starting to unfold. And it's about anticipation. Mm-hmm. And the safety, a great safety, like say Deion Sanders, for example. Really Which speaking, I really have Really no speaking to the is. men here, probably. <laughs> I'm like, who is that? He was such a great safety. Or for example, take uh, Wayne Gretzky. When don't they asked that him, person either. That's, that's the greatest. <laughs> so you don't player. have to, but you don't have to yeah, know these yeah. athletes to appreciate the sports analogies. So the greatest hockey player of all time. When they asked him like why he was so good, it's because he went to the where the puck was going to be. Mm. He didn't go to where the puck was. That's so good. So it's about this anticipation. It's about reading the room. It's about okay, I see something developing. What can I do to help this Mm -hmm. situation probably not in the present but the one coming and so i made a quick example that we have a routine for sky going to take a bath at night and then go to sleep Mm -hmm. and then i can check out and see you know are there bubbles in the bath is Mm -hmm. there enough soap is the diaper that was on the floor like thrown into the trash Mm -hmm. she's going to be going to bed after this Mm -hmm. so is that bed set up are her animals in there Yes. is the air filters that have water in it mm-hmm. or the air purifier. Mm-hmm. So all of these things. And I think depending on your defined roles, these things can fall to the wayside, especially when it comes to your partner. Mm-hmm. So just because I have certain defined roles and if you're in a season where you're more down, you're dealing with something, am I expecting you just to pick up on your normal responsibilities or can I be attuned enough to help pick up the slack. Yes. I want to go to one future point in this and then come back to the second one you had written here, Erin. In order to feel emotional closeness with each other, you actually have to be having conversations at an emotional level. Seems so fundamental, yet it's forgotten. If you are only talking about to-dos, if you're only talking about life management, you are missing out on connecting emotionally. And that requires vulnerability. Now, we're not saying you have to be a sob story every day, right? But sharing emotionally the state that you're in, even if that is being excited about something, being joyful, having that be seen and felt outside of you. And also the hard things. Like I have felt real closeness to you when I can open up and be sad or be overwhelmed and express that, whether it has to do with something between us, another relationship, stuff that's going on in the world, you know, and me just being able to open up to you about how I feel about that. And it also makes me feel close when you do that back, right? When you share, and of course, I'm not asking you to be quote unquote, as emotional as I am. Like you, you have a great mindset uh, so often, but 
if you just even share the things you're thinking about, like I want to know more of your inner world, you know, what's on your mind? What are you thinking? What are you burdened by? What do you feel overwhelmed by? It doesn't have to be that you're sad and, and to any degree that I am, but I just want to know what you're thinking about. What are you worried about? What are you overwhelmed by? So this really speaks to the second point about vulnerability Mm -hmm. being a key for emotional intimacy. So why don't you just keep on wrapping, right? Because what's the difference between the questions Mm -hmm. that you're asking, which is kind of the path you're on, asking me how I'm doing, checking in with me, that's sort of the attunement Mm -hmm. to vulnerability. Where does that line between I need to be bringing to the table more of my own vulnerability? being brave to reveal myself, what I might be embarrassed by, my fears, my concerns, my worries. So where is this balance between vulnerability on both sides and what would you say leads to emotional intimacy through how we each show vulnerability? I think it is what you said really quickly was the quality of your questions and being able to actually create time for this. Now we know that the average couple in a season like we are, where we both are running our business, we've got our toddler, we have a whole to-do list, it isn't that we have six hours to sit there and have you know this in-depth conversation every day or even three times a week. And so it is getting more creative for these moments. I'd say that it's in, in our real in our life, it is that we check in at least once a day, whether that's early in the morning while we're hanging out with our daughter and just checking in, hey, how you doing? What's on your mind? How are you feeling today? Or it's towards the end of the day where we are driving somewhere or we are on a quick walk or playing outside. So every day there's some kind of a pulse check, checking in on each other. So I think it's about making it an intentional focus for you to go deeper and to be able to ask those questions and then make it a goal to actually be vulnerable with each other. Don't be strong all the time. Don't be just like, I'm fine. Even if it's something to do with work and you're like, oh, I don't want to talk about work. So then you hold it in, hold it in. Your partner doesn't know you're feeling stressed or feeling as though, you know, you're under some deadline or that you're worried about job security, whatever it is, being able to just really share how are you really in that area. Mm -hmm. I think to link, I'm noticing how these all link together. So I want to bring up the third point Mm -hmm. and that's initiation. Mm -hmm. Because as you were sharing, it can't be that your partner is the one that's asking you questions all the time, which then allowing for your choice to be vulnerable with what you share or not. It needs to be a balance. And we're not saying 50-50, but there's got to be some initiation on your part. That it's not just offering up vulnerability in response to your partner's asking, Mm -hmm. but showing initiation to have these types of conversations. And again, not even initiation to ask your partner, but to say, hey, I know we have a lot going on. I've been attuned Mm -hmm. and I see that you might be having the capacity and availability here pretty soon, like maybe tonight or when we drive to pick up Sky, for example. That's what something I might say. Mm -hmm. I have something I want to share with you. Mm -hmm. I want to, there's been something I've been dealing with. There's something I'm kind of embarrassed by. There's something that... I'm worried about. Yeah, I'm worried Mm -hmm. about and I want to bring up. And I could tell that you're in the middle of work right now or you're doing something. So I don't think now's the time. Mm -hmm. So it is about me being equally initiative, Mm -hmm. like having the initiative to be vulnerable. Again, not just at the request of my partner. Absolutely. And I've got a great suggestion for that here in just a moment. Do you want to address this last piece you put here about honesty in all areas to be able to support emotional intimacy? Yeah, this is actually the longest of these points, I think, and maybe expect to get some comments or messages back Mm -hmm. from this. So I want to just really explore this. And it's interesting how linked these each are. So I think attunement was a good place to start, like Mm -hmm. start with that. I think that leads into this connection between vulnerability, Mm -hmm. but your ability to also initiate vulnerability Mm -hmm. and then the last thing is well are you really being vulnerable if you're not being honest Mm -hmm. and so honesty with anything that's been hidden Mm -hmm. so i'm not necessarily and i'm really like exploring this Mm -hmm. i'm not saying it's something strictly that you've lied about or is like a major impact some might think of like a level of infidelity, Mm -hmm. whether physical or financial or emotional, what, you know, whatever that is, something inappropriate. Right. 
But as I dive further into honesty, anything being kept or hidden does create an emotional wedge. Mm -hmm. And it might not seem like a big deal at first, but a wedge can turn into like a small fissure or fracture, Mm -hmm. even if it's small. And if we were to think about this in terms of like a house and its foundation, if there's a crack in the foundation, if there's a crack in the drywall or a mm-hmm. crack somewhere, without it being addressed or repaired, it will only get bigger over time. Mm-hmm. Think of even a crack in your windshield. Mm-hmm. It's like we have to deal with these things when they're small. It's your whole point about seeds, not weeds. Mm-hmm. And there's another point about even if it's small, if there's a little bit of withholding. So sometimes it's not like, oh, I'm not lying or covering something up, but The more you withhold something, this is one of the principles we talk about in coaching, you naturally withdraw from your partner. Mm -hmm. So if I'm keeping anything, I want to talk about maybe some some differences in what you or examples of what you could be holding out on. Yeah. But if you're holding something back, if something's hidden, then that withhold does create, as I said, the emotional wedge, but also creates a withdrawal Mm -hmm. from your partner. And so you pull away, whether it's like the physical space. You don't engage in maybe a particular conversation. You withdraw love. You withdraw attempts for, say, making deposits to your partner's love account. You may withdraw in making like physical intimacy attempts. Mm-hmm. Like you're, you're withdrawing in a way. And what happens then over time also is that you create what's called projections. Like you make up a narrative, a story, some sort of story. Mm-hmm. Like, well, it's going to be a huge blow up and they won't accept me and the relationship will be over Mm -hmm. or you withhold other things. And it's like, well, my partner wants to control me Mm -hmm. or they're going to react. So you make up this whole narrative, which is actually like a validation for you to continue to keep things hidden. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a real problem because if you continue to do that, you will, your mind will make up justifications to withhold bigger and bigger and bigger things. Mm -hmm. You've heard probably how, if to maintain a lie will require more and more lies to keep just that one going. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying again, you're lying, but anything being withheld is going to have a very similar conceptual feeling to it. Yep. The more you withhold, the more you pull back, the more you make projections and the more you kind of have to keep things going. And at the very minimum, there's not vulnerability and you're not creating closeness and connection. And how can you have intimacy when any, so what is where's the mark here right it's like well where where do i have to share everything going on Mm. like do i have to share my bowel movements (laughs) i I gave that example uh, a couple weeks ago and it's like well no like i don't need to share everything about like what my stomach's doing or how that responded to the ice cream that i ate or Mm. the you know we buy this cookie dough and (laughs) so i don't always feel the best right we don't need the physical sensations described right so i don't i want to kind of leave it at that and i just want for you listening just to think about when I say honesty and then when I say something being hidden, if there is something, doesn't matter how big or small, you know what that is. Mm-hmm. Even so we're not here asked. to, yeah, we're not here to tell you like about a big lie or what it is. But like, I think really, if you sit with that, something I think you're holding you back. know exactly something you're holding back, something you're keeping from your partner mm-hmm. and something that you justify as not being a big deal, mm-hmm. but it is going to have an impact. And I know that all sounds very significant when he talks about that. For some of you, there might be something bigger that you have been holding back, whether that's, you know, a physical concern you have for yourself, like you are worried, but you're sick about something, or you're worried about your child, you're overwhelmed, and you're trying to tough it out and seem like you're fine, but you're actually really overwhelmed. Or it could be that maybe you are using a substance too much, right? Mm -hmm. Like maybe you are drinking more than really you're wanting to admit Mm -hmm. or using some other kind of substance Mm -hmm. or involved with some other kind of addictive material. And so again, some of the, there's different severities of them, but what could you be holding back that could be creating that distance? And I know that all sounds very significant, but remember the main point around this emotional intimacy section is that you are vulnerable with each other, that you are attuned to each other, that there is initiation of meaningful conversation between you two, and that there is complete honesty. Mm -hmm. Now in real time, because I know those all can be like, whoa, Freeman's like, where do you fit that in, in the busy life? A great place to start, I'm telling you, and we'll say it a million times until you're consistent with it, is with our weekly family meeting. If you haven't started these, 
you, why? Like this is just step one to do in your partnership, to improve your communication, to connect more. And there's a couple of ways you can get our weekly family meeting template. The best way is to actually participate in our 30 day couples challenge because it's included as a bonus gift. And then you get all the challenge activities and you can sign up for the next one at mycoupleschallenge.com. The second way is to get the guide on its own. So you can just get it separate, no challenge included, just download the guide. And that is at thecouplesexperience.com slash family. So we will link both of those in the show notes, but that is a very practical way to make time to foster your closeness, to foster that emotional connection. It's also going to have you focus on your love account, being on the same page. I mean, there's just so many benefits from this simple structure that we put in there that you can do no matter how busy you are. So with that said, do you want to go to the yeah, next Yeah, and I recognize that... We spent 25 minutes on the podcast talking about the emotional Mm. intimacy and connection side. Mm -hmm. And really, that's what we're about. The communication, the conflict resolution, the connection, the collaboration, the, you know, being a team. Like, that's what we're about. So I wouldn't say we're the physical intimacy experts. There are other people that focus on that. Mm -hmm. So when you think like, oh, wow, that was a big disparity between uh, they're they're covering the emotional side to the physical side. Well, I've got some things to say about the physical. We got some down here. I'm just noting there's going to be a big difference here in the time. So creating more physical intimacy, again, being given a lot less time on this (laughs) podcast, I'll just start with focusing on the love deposits. And you mentioned the couple's challenge. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what well, it's not 100%, but the challenge does do three different things. Mm-hmm. You're going to get one day to your email, email inbox is going to be about making a love deposit. Yep. One is about a communication tip and one is a conversation Every starter. three days it rotates, right? So more physical intimacy, focusing on those love deposits, whether it's like flirting, mm-hmm. whether it's more like physical affection, mm-hmm. that's sort of non-sexual. Yeah. And... It being something that gets you more in the mood that's outside the bedroom. A lot of intimacy experts would say that foreplay begins outside the bedroom, right? So if Aaron only touched me and got flirty Mm. when we were in the bedroom, I would be like, what the heck, right? Like I want to feel throughout the day that you are attracted to me, that you desire Mm. me, that you want to touch me, right? Even when we have hard days. And of course, you guys were saying all this because we repair. So remember that we aren't saying, yeah, argue all the time, never repair, but be affectionate with each other, right? Like, so that's just foundational is that you are repairing, that you're working through conflicts, but have your foreplay start outside the bedroom. We have a toddler, we're getting ready for work. If you guys only saw us, we started our day at 445 this morning, okay? So we know busy schedule. However, we try to sprinkle in little flirtations throughout the day. I walk by Aaron, I graze his bum. Mm. He walks by me, he stops, he rubs my back for a second, he gives me a compliment. So we are flirting with each other throughout the day. Don't have foreplay, just start in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. We had uh, Vanessa Marin on our podcast a while ago. I Mm -hmm. can't remember the term she used, but when you're only creating physical touch, When you want... The bristle reaction. Is it called bristle? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and I understood it. It's like, well, your partner touches you. And if every time it's because they want sex from you, Mm -hmm. then, well, you're going to have like an aversion to touch. And it's like, that's the last thing you want your partner to feel Mm -hmm. from your own touch. Exactly. So I'm glad you remember that term. Yes. And then, go ahead. So yeah, let's just do the second one. Life just can't be about management, which you brought up. Or I should say all about management. It is about some management. But there's not a lot of the managing of life tasks that lead to the most important thing around marriage, which really is that connection, that emotional intimacy. you're not saying that you don't get turned on while doing the laundry? Like, you're not like, as we're doing, it's a joke, right? I'm being facetious that if all you're doing, if you're ending the day after you get kids in bed and you clean up the kitchen and then sometimes there's an extra chore to do or two, are you in the mood? Most people aren't. Now, that's a dis- difference between men and women. And of course, there's exceptions to this. But generally, and this is what all the research says, men do have more of a natural sex drive. As in, it doesn't take as many circumstances for them to have that desire. 
For women, though, this is a big difference. If I have a ton on my mind, if the mental load is really heavy and I am like it's 8 p.m. and there's still six things I'm thinking and I don't feel that you're helping me at all, am I in the mood? No, I'm mentally and emotionally overwhelmed. So one way that if the male partner is listening to this that you can help is by considering how to take things off her plate. How to create an environment where she isn't focused on the to-dos. And so maybe that means if you two are wanting to work on physical intimacy being a priority, thinking about your rituals, your evening rituals. You know, do you have some time that you spend together that isn't doing a chore? And being able to make tea together and, you know, actually go to bed at the same time. And you also have to consider timing. We've said this on previous episodes before. It's been a while, but... I'm not a nighttime person, right? Like after 7 p.m., I am starting to land, right? Like my the plane is starting to land to go to sleep. And so you also have to consider the timing and when is your partner's energetic capacity best to where they could be receptive. Does that mean you have to schedule it? Scheduling is another factor. And again, these are all things that intimacy experts would affirm that when it comes to a busy lifestyle as well, scheduling can be a constructive action to take now it doesn't have to be so rigid that it's like okay at 8 30 p.m i'm gonna be in the mood for you right you it's about saying okay you know what i'll give you a few examples of how couples do this some couples literally do schedule it you know Tuesdays and Fridays for examples those are our nights that we anticipate being intimate but it's not oh let me show up and just you know I have to just lay there, right? You want to focus on the experience of it. And that's a big missing for a lot of couples is that you're just doing the same old, same old. You're not focusing on the real pleasure, especially for a woman. Again, it it takes more for her to feel in the mood, to feel pleasure. So are you just showing up and doing the same old, same old? Or are you getting creative? And like we've attended an intimacy workshop before to just learn new things that are about the energetics behind it, right? You can read books. You, there's online programs. You actually have to invest energy into the intimacy experience. Pleasure is important, not just showing up for it, right? So scheduling can be a great action, but focus on that fulfillment piece. So the last one is focus on the quality of that experience, especially for women, and bring more intention into this area. Again, like you said, rather than the same old ways. And I understand like there's this time factor. I think it does feel for men something to, I don't know, I don't want to say like check off the list, Mm. but it can feel a little bit more like, yeah, this this action and let's get this done and then I'm, you know, I'm satisfied. So Mm -hmm. there probably is a level of, this is going to be funny to say, <laughs> everything requires effort. Mm-hmm. I mean, anything you want to get not only better at, but anything you want to even maintain, mm-hmm. you have to put effort in towards, whether it's learning and growing your mindset or your spiritual life, something at your work or parenting. And then it's just kind of interesting. We see intimacy as this thing where maybe just for men, I don't know, that we don't have to put effort in and I'm just going to show up and it's going to be just as satisfying for my partner as for me and kind of get it done type Mm -hmm. of thing. Yeah. I think that what's often missed in the intimacy area is fun. Again, if all of your relationship and your time is focused on life management, it's going to be harder to be in the mood. So are you creating moments for fun? Are you laughing together? Are you sparking joy in the home? Like, do you think your partner is going to be super drawn to you and attracted to you and want you if you aren't showing up with a positive attitude and mood? So you have to think about that too. Like, what energy are you cultivating? What attitude do you show up with? These are all a part of creating the environment for physical intimacy. Because you have to think, again, physical intimacy is about closeness, just like emotional intimacy. And for me to be drawn to you, to want to feel close to you physically, I have to feel that the environment pulls for that. So think about these other factors. Yes, scheduling is a factor. Yes, focusing on it being a pleasurable experience. But think about the energy, the attitude, the environment that has you drawn to each other and attracted to each other. So I think 
that we did some justice to the physical intimacy (laughs) section there. Of course, we did focus a lot on emotional because we feel that is so paramount to the relationship. But make sure you dive further into our resources. We're going to do more episodes on some of these chicken or the egg dynamics because there are so many in a relationship where it does feel one comes before the other. And so we will cover more. So make sure you're subscribed to the podcast. Make sure you dive into our 30-day couples challenge, our family meeting guide. You will see those linked in the show notes. And again, stay tuned for some up coming resources that we have for you in your partnership. But we love you guys and we will talk to you on the next episode.